Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the um, 23rd Genesis Models live session. Um, last week, um, if you was watching, we've really almost come to the end with our MiG-15. So we'll be finishing this tonight and we'll be starting a brand spanking um, whole new build. So um, stay tuned to see what it is we're gonna be building next. We'll get it out, have a little look, maybe a little bit of a start. Uh, but first off, we have our MiG-15. Also, as always, do remember, you know, get on the chat, get on the chat, ask whatever questions, whatever problems you've got going on right now, you need answering, and I can answer it live. And I could even maybe do a quick demonstration depending on what you guys are asking so let's jump into um, the MiG-15 let's get this finished so as we can um, probably get started on a new new build which hopefully you're gonna like because I do like the look of it um, I have done an inbox review of it which um, will be going up tomorrow so um, hopefully you'll like it now here's our MiG-15 we've got a matte coat all over it um, as you can see I have removed the canopy mask um, there's only some little touches to do on this the first thing I want to touch on um, we've got our navigation lights on here so for this the colors I like to use I like to start off with um, basing it first Oops, just drop the paint I like to base it first when it comes to brush painting I do like to use games workshop stuff so let's maybe bring you in I do like to use Games Workshop stuff. We've got Warped Stone Glue. We've got Evil Sun's Scarlet. Uh, some nice red and greens. I'm going to be using um, Windsor Newton um, Series 7 Triple Zero just to paint this on. I might just paint the one side just to sort of show you. I just want to double check. I always forget which side the colours go on. Uh, that's it. Red is on the left. I always seem to forget that. So let's do our red. Right. Now because this is just like a little spot. Right. I mean, normally I would thin my paints down. Um, you can still thin your paints down and um, do a couple of coats. But because it's just like a little spot on here. I find it's okay just to put that little spot on there. All right, so I've just basically painted on have a little red spot just on there. Now that's going to dry matte, but really, you know, it's a it is, you know, a piece of glass and we want it to look shiny and glassy. So that red is just a a base coat for it so I want to let that dry and I'm going to come out with another colour to sort of gloss that up a little bit. I was checking on some questions well, we've got some requests for what's going to be the next build and from what you guys have said in there um, it's not it i mean a b52 suggested by bob shortland would be a really cool project to do next or an osprey um the euro fighter by ravel that is a cool kit and i i wouldn't mind building that myself actually i do i do have one over in my little stash over there which i started i did the cockpit um, and never got around to finishing it because i lost the canopy but um that is a kit i want to work on um, next up, we have um, our sort of antenna line that goes across here. Um, you can use all sorts of different products. I know, you know, in the past, people would sort of get two pieces of plastic, melt it, and string it out and make this really fine bit of stringed out plastic and glue that on. Um, breaks pretty easily. Um, these days, there is products called... Um, you got the rig that thing. I mean, I do believe this is like a German company. I did have to, you know, go um, somewhere in Europe. I forgot. I think it's Germany I got this from. Um, kind of expensive because you've got to sort of import it in. Um, I know um, models are go. I did get some stuff called Easy Line, but they've um, closed for business. 
um, what was it? Um, what was it? Scale model shop. I can't remember, but maybe if you Google Easy Line, they've got all these different sort of um, the um, basically that they're, they're like rubber strings. I'll just get one out. I mean, this heavy one. I mean, it's too thick for our one seventy second scale here, but it's basically like string, but it's like elastic bands, which. What's so cool about it being an elastic band is it allows you to put them on easier and, you know, because they're so easily knocked, I mean, it's going to be hung across here and you just knock it with your finger and if you use something like wire or, as I say, the plastic, you're going to break it off. But being elasticated, you know, it's got quite a bit of give, so it kind of stops you from breaking it. But as I say, um, this easy line heavy version is too thick um this one here i went for this german company because you can get them really really thin all right so if i just get this out um, it's going to be very hard for you to see how thin it is in fact i can't even find the end where's the end go on this uh, let's get a toothpick out see if i can unravel it and find the end crikey it is just dangling there. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but I do have like that tiny little bit. If you could just see, very nice, tiny, tiny bit of EZ line to sort of give you that 170 second scale kind of effect. You can just hardly sort of see it. Uh, it's personally up to you. I mean, this might be a bit thin for some people's taste. Um, but you know you can get lots of different different sizes now to put this in here what i'm going to do i'm going to get out a very tiny tiny drill bit and hopefully i can um, put it in one of my little voices here i've got the tamiya one here quite expensive for what it is but um still does the job quite good now hopefully i'm going to, have to fit this tiny one in here I've just got this nice little set and the one I'm after is like a 0 0.3 mil. Right, just, ooh, I almost dropped all that. So let's try and get this now and put it in our little hand voice. Screw it down. There we go. Got to be very careful with the small ones. The small ones, they break so so easily you can break just putting them in this voice just here so i'm going to tighten that on now this is the smallest one i've got as you can see now it goes it starts from this point this is why i'm using a drill because it starts from this point here um, this point up here where it ends that's not such a big deal so i'm going to now very slowly now i know this is live and i can't cut away but i've got to make sure no i think i'm going to come in first and make a bit of a pilot hole so i'm coming in with a sewing needle in a little hand voice just here i'm gonna apply a bit of pressure and just make a bit of a pilot hole on my drill because um, as I say, this drill bit is like a 0 0.3 mil, which is really, really small, easily, easily broken. So I'm going to very lightly start to drill in there. Right, now this hole should be big enough to take a bit of line, but we still might have to drill a little bit bigger. We'll, we'll see in a sec. Right, this is quite a delicate, very small thing to do, so it is probably going to take you a bit of time. Right, so do bear with me. I'll just screw this as well as try and read some comments. Right, feel free for any of those questions. I mean, you could almost probably see, I mean, how delicate the 
drill bit is. I mean, I'm actually seeing it bend as I'm like turning it. So that's why you've got to be so careful with it. I'm not really applying much pressure as much as you might want to sort of apply some pressure and sort of dig the drill in a little bit. If you do that, you're probably going to break it. So a little bit of pressure and just keep turning. Be patient. Right, you're eventually going to get there. It's eventually going to get through. So I think I'm almost getting there. I do want to try and go all the way through if I can. Okay. It's taken a little bit of a more of a while than I hope. So I'm going to unscrew this a little bit. And I'm going to push it in a little bit more. And sort of try and just maybe get the a bit of just the tip. All right. So we uh, limit the chance of us breaking it. And hopefully I can apply a little bit more pressure to actually drill through this. Um, just a little note as well. I mean, you guys have been doing your 172nd scale builds on, on the Genesis Models website. Um, and they're looking good. And that's for the group build. Right, so you're all looking on track to getting them done, which is rather good and nice to look at. It'd be cool to judge them when the group build comes to an end. God, this is taking a while. It's a problem with it being so small, yeah, I've got to just be so, so careful. Not only that, I've got a feeling I might have broken this at a previous date. Which is probably why it's not going in as well as I'd hope. <laughs> well, we have got a bit of a hole going on. Sorry about this taking a long time, as I say, I would normally in my other videos, I would cut away and you'd see it with me all nicely drilled through. So, I mean, for you guys who haven't, who don't know, I mean, I do have a website and on the website, um, I do like loads of videos um, where I do like step by steps like this, but um i find it it's it's a different different kind of viewing shall we say um viewing it live compared to edited i mean you know i do tend to like video everything when i edit um but it's a little bit more fast paced as i say than this i should be getting through at some point it's really there we go just popped through so we've got that tiny, tiny little hole just in there now, right? And then here comes another sort of fiddly bit, right? Because we've now got to get this little bit of string and try and thread it through, right? So I'm going to get out some tweezers and hopefully hold the end of it and try and thread it through. Um, and actually, because um, I want to sort of also be ready, I'm going to get out a bit of super glue. I did harp on last week about super glue and, um, you know, buying the fancy stuff compared to just cheapo stuff. I kind of prefer for general sort of super gluing. I do like your general cheapo super glue. So that's ready. I've poured a little bit on some scrap plastic. I know it's a bit of um, tough, but you know, it ain't going to work. And then I'm going to get ready 
my little my metal super glue applicator. So that's ready, just off camera. Then I'm going to try and get this tiny bit of rubber string into the tweezers, which because it's so small, you can probably see it's not going to be easy. Now I've pinched that. I don't want to faff around too much, so I'm just going to cut it so there's just a little bit on the end. All right, and I'm going to try and thread this through, which hopefully I can, without too much hassle. Okay, now the hard part is now is laying this down after I've threaded it through and hope that it will not come out and not move away, which it hasn't, but it's slightly sticking to my finger. Tiny stick to my finger. Okay, that is just in there. You probably can't see it. I'm going to bring you in a little bit more. Oh, I don't want to move this to get you on camera, but it is just in there just just slightly in there so then we come in with the super glue um which i'm just going to get a little bit on the end of my super glue applicator and i should be able to just touch into that hole and hopefully it will stay in there i might have to just sort of pull this away no, uh, okay, it's glued to the thing, no worries. We'll just have to start again. So I'm just going to cut it. I think I've got dried glue on here. Um, I did show you last week that if you get a lighter, you can just burn off the used dried up super glue, and that's all good to, to go again. little comment there very funny about drilling for oil it, yeah it did seem to take forever um, and again this is also another one of those patience moments as well because I have gone off and picked I mean it's it's almost as thin as a piece of um, how do I describe it like um, a cobweb which is so small so I'm just gonna try get it on the hole and get a quick blob of super glue just boom just like that don't know if you saw that because I was really concentrating on getting that but I think I've got that now attached it does look attached. I don't feel like I've got a massive amount of super glue on there, so I'm just going to come in now that that's attached. I'm just going to give it just that little bit more super glue. Ooh, don't. Just to try and lock it in a little bit better. Now, I know the super glue is going to leave like a bit of a shine. As it dries, it's going to shine a bit glossy. But that's okay. We can just, you know, come in afterwards, bit of matte spray paint, and just little touch of spray paint of matte just there, and that should be sorted. Now this end, we don't need to do a, the whole drill thing. This end, we can um, attach it by just without a hole. So. Just getting a bit of this line and then we're going to get out, I'm just going to quickly burn off super glue on here. Let it cool a little bit because it will dry the super glue really quickly if you um, you know, melt it and warm it up and then put super glue on. So then we come down to the towel section, maybe we can sort of come in from this angle. Right, try not to pull too hard, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to get some super glue 
on the end of my super glue applicator and this is going to be really quick because you, you don't want the super glue drawing very quick um, too quickly so I'm going to basically uh, we don't want to glue this on slack I know you can't see that line um, you want to sort of pull it right so you don't break it but you you, get, you add a bit of tension to it so it's nice and taut right and then you want to bring it so that the line right is touching where you want it and then we're going to come in and just touch some super glue right where the easy line is and then what should happen is the super glue should go off and glue our easy line in place which it has done right again i don't know how well you can see that maybe if i come in with something white a bit of a white background just very very quickly piece of paper in my drawer just here right you may be able to see this now sorry about the time and stuff it takes but yeah i think you could just see that on camera now that has locked in and we've got a little bit of our excess just here which as you could see is nice and loose but this is nice and taut All right so this is where we need to come in um, with a fairly nice new blade wherever my blade's gone All right fairly nice new blade right because we want to just cut this right up right up to the edge where we've glued it in all right, so what I'm going to do is on our little reel here, I'm going to just give a little bit of a pull, right, so it's nice and taut. And then where we've glued it, I just should be able to just cut that line right up to it. We don't want any sort of excess. Maybe coming from this direction. Should we cut that? I probably could have done with a, a brand. There we go. It's actually caught. There we go. So now that is nicely cut right up. Let's have a look, see if you can see that. You should be able to see that with a white background. It's nicely on there. It looks really nice and thin. Um, and that is just a really cool, cool touch. I think that, it, I know it's really, really thin, but I do think it goes in scale rather, rather nicely. Um, and that is almost it. We can probably now come in and do our last little bit here. Now, um, I haven't actually done this before, but I um, did want to um, try it with this build. I mean, you could just come in on our little bit of red here put any kind of gloss on there but i wanted to try out these um spirit stone red they're like technical paints from um citadel games workshop and we're going to paint this on top so it's going to it's basically a nice red glossy paint all right so we've nicely primed it with our red just there and then we're going to come in with this nice glossy red paint right and no need to sort of thin it i'm just going to come in you know and almost sort of like put a bit of a blob where we've done our red right and so there we go that is our nice little um, indication light navigational lights and that's going to be um, nice and shiny so off camera i'll go off and i'll do the green side the green side is waystone green if you're interested in that uh, but as i say you can easily just come along and use a gloss coat so there we have it i mean it's basically done um our mig 15 by edard um, personally I have enjoyed building it, it has gone together rather rather well, loads and loads of detail for a 172nd scale aircraft, um, 
doing i mean normally when it comes to doing natural metal finishes i'd probably use like enamel or lacquer based paints but uh, you guys requested me to use um, a more water-based paint i.e why we use the um the vallejo metal color um, also i did something differently normally i would sort of do pre-shading bleaching and post shading even on natural metal finishes to sort of give it more life um, but this time round I decided to go with that nice neat natural metal finish kind of look and um, although it's not my personal preference it I still like the look of it it still looks rather cool so that is the MiG-15 hopefully you are enjoying that um, as i say i'm going to finish those last tiny little bits off off camera um no big deal just gonna have a little read of our comments see if you guys have got anything um yeah i mean good comment there by bob shortland um yeah, some nice diorama would look rather, rather cool. I do have, I mean, the box I brought, I think there was about four or six of these actual aircrafts in there. So you could really sort of make a, a nice little runway with loads of them there. And, and yeah, it was, sorry, it was, uh, it was Keith Waterhouse who asked about the um, um, doing it as a... Um, using the Vallejo metal colours so as to use like water-based paints which um, I, I do like to to accommodate everyone because I mean I've already done natural metal finishes with enamels and lacquers before and I haven't done one with the normal water colours um, so it's, it's nice to kind of try them all um, so that is the MiG-15 now we're going to get out um, what's going to be the new build um, coming up in our live live session so what we're gonna do I need to clear um, this kit away um, which I'm just gonna sort of throw, not throw it somewhere but throw it somewhere out the way um, and a little bit of a pack away sorry again this is live I'd normally cut away um, but I need to make space for the new kit all right Sort of a general tidy one that will do. Well then, the new kit, hopefully you are going to like it. I know you guys last week um, asked about doing armour, um, and then I looked in my stash and realised I've got no armour, which was um, quite embarrassing really. But I will get some armour in. But I have decided on um, this beauty just here. Um, maybe if I change change the angle a bit so you can see the box a bit better here we go we have the um hobby boss nice hobby boss kit it's 148 scale and it is the um am sky hawk um does look rather rather cool as far as jets go it is quite a small sort of jet so we're not going to be like um you know doing a really sort of big one with this and i do like what was it um it was this set of markings just here i've picked this because um we did tackle doing black spraying um with the was it the wellington we did a wellington as a as, um a, in the, the live sessions with this one we're going to have this white undercarriage so doing white is also that little bit different because as i say you know you do bleaching and you add white to bleach it whereas if you're already doing white you can't exactly add white to bleach it so it goes you go about it a little bit different um and i have done an inbox review of this and i hope to get it up tomorrow so if you want to have a more detailed look at the kit and uh, the detail and what i think of it and, and whatnot um that will be going up tomorrow for you guys to go and watch so let's get this open um i can't really um really sort of start this kit today um so we are sort of coming to the end really so getting any questions or anything like that um as you can see i have already opened um, this up um, i just sort of want to show you for next week what is to come 
Um, really cool kit. Um, the detail on here is rather, rather nice. I do like it. Um, with this cockpit, we have got some nice detail with this. Not going to be. Um, we did um, photo etch with the, the MiG 15. This one, we're going to go old school. Going to paint all the dials and weather it up and make it sort of look cool. Um, there's a few techniques actually that I have been meaning to try with cockpits. We'll see if we can maybe uh, move along with that. Uh, there, there, looks good. Um, nice and beefy with um, fuel tanks with this, which I do want to beef it up. Um, again, more fuel tanks. Woohoo! Um, got some sidewinders with that. Move it along. Um, really nice canopy also with this really nice and shiny um, even with no sort of seam line going down the middle so we ain't got to tackle that uh, again we're going to be moving along with a cockpit um, also you know get a bag ton of weapons with this I mean we've got like stuff like um, triple ejection rack systems and everything so we can just have loads and loads of bombs there's two of them sprues Right, um, then we've got a bunch of decals in here. Let's move this out the way. Um, again, nice bunch of decals, which my sellotape has stuck to my decal, so I'm going to have to be careful ripping this off. We don't want to mess up the decals. Very, very carefully. There we go. And that is probably because it's folded there. So let's just fix this. There we go. So yeah, nice bunch of decals with this kit. Uh, they are by Hobby Boss, so they're normally not that bad, but they can be a bit tricky. So we might be able to go into some advanced stuff with, with this, because when you've got not so good decals, yeah, um, there's, there's different techniques to just get them to stick down and conform and stuff. So um, I'm kind of hoping they're not going to be bad decals, but you know, if they am, I can sort of teach you how to tackle bad decals. So that is the decals. Um, then let's have a quick look at the markings. Um, you do get two sets of markings with this. This, this set of markings is quite nice uh, and the US Marines, uh, black sheeps. But um, as I say with this one, this one is sort of like some nice old school stuff with the, the white undercarriage. And I do want to sort of show you how to do um, white. So that should be a cool one to sort of to nicely tackle. As well as, you know, it being, um, you know, an aircraft carrier type aircraft, we can really go to town with some weathering. So whereas with a natural metal finish, we did no pre-shading, post-shading, bleaching, not much weathering this one i want to go to town with so hopefully you're going to be looking forward to that so just quickly check out any questions um oh interesting question there uh by perch the master asking about doing steam locomotives that is quite interesting um it is sort of like a subject um because in this kind of business i do like to sort of look into all areas i mean you do armor a different way you do shipbuilding a bit of a different way you do model aircraft a different way um but then if you learn and master all these different areas you can sort of merge them and bring them together and sort of just make some amazing models if you just kind of like really sort of broaden your horizons. And, and locomotives is something I've wanted to sort of jump into, but I haven't really looked into it enough. And um, when it comes to me sort of tackling a new area like that, you probably won't see anything anytime soon because I do like to make sure I go off and I kind of like maybe build a couple, say, say for instance, not saying I will, but for instance, if I was going to do a locomotive video, I'd probably go off in the background, build a couple of locomotives, try and master it, 
before I then teach you because I mean there's no point me sort of jumping straight in and just going for it because you know I've got to teach you how to do it um, to, a, to, to a nice decent level but uh, quite interesting now I, I, I it has been in the back of mind that I want to um, jump into that area I have been sort of messing around actually um, painting figurines and stuff um, you know doing faces and eyes and flesh and all that kind of stuff um, which I haven't actually like fully shown you yet as again it's, it's one of these things I like to go off camera and sort of master before I show you guys but you know that sort of lets you know what's going on there um, so if there's no more questions which it doesn't look like sorry this one has been um, a bit short but you know we've just finished that build I'm showing you what's going to be the next build we're going to be starting hopefully you're going to be licking your lips for that um, for next Friday as always you know every Friday at six o'clock we go live uh, and probably um, I haven't really thought it through but the first thing we're probably going to tackle is going to be the cockpit as I say I want to do it sort of old school no photo etch or anything fancy like that we're just going to sort of paint it whether it um, and go down that route um, so hopefully you're going to look forward to that um, and if there's nothing else um, it does sound like you guys are going to be looking forward to it according to the comments um, so until next time you know as always my name is Bob Waldron this is Genesis Models and I hope you've enjoyed